uh, creating a sustainable future. A very interesting uh, topic uh, coming ahead of us uh, from an expert of AI, Mike uh, Meinvig. Uh, thanks so much, Mike, for also creating time for that. Uh, today's session will be moderated by um, Gitonga Mijiwe. Um, but just before he takes over uh, on the moderation, I want to invite our CIO, uh, Shokat, to come and do the introduction. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shukuku. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and good morning. It is my pleasure to welcome you to another installment of the ICT Distinguished Lecture Series, where we continue to enjoy the privilege of having remarkable and highly sought after speakers willing to volunteer their time and thoughts to help transform our thinking. The contribution of these remarkable individuals helps us to better position ourselves for the future and better enable us to fulfill our mission of improving quality of life in the context where we work. I am deeply honored and proud to be able to welcome Mr. Mark Menovich today. As you know, the environment and climate change have become very important topics that need to be addressed or the consequences may be irreversible. I think all of you are familiar with the massive floods that took place last year in Pakistan, while Kenya recently experienced its worst drought in 40 years. Wildfires have ravaged Hawaii, Greece, California, and Canada. In July, the world experienced its highest average temperatures since Mayerman began. And in Florida, the ocean temperature was set to be as hot as Bath which places its remarkable coral and other sea life at risk. As our populations grows and our need for energy increases, our demands on the planet are also increasing. Can artificial intelligence help to solve some of the challenges that we face? I'm glad that we have Mark Minovich with us to speak and perhaps give us some insight in this area. Mark Minovich is the president and founding partner of Going Global Ventures, a digital cognitive AI strategist, a UN advisor, an investor, and an artificial intelligence expert. He is currently UN advisor to the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs, focusing on digital government. He is also chairman of the Executive Committee of Artificial Intelligence for Good Foundation and co-founder and co-chair at the Artificial Intelligence for the Planet Alliance. Mark is a senior fellow, Council on Competitive, Competitiveness in Washington, DC, and senior fellow, Global Federation of Competitiveness Councils. Mark advises the public sector, large global enterprises, and brands in the US, EU, Gulf countries, South America, and Japan. He dedicates innovation efforts and AI knowledge to amplifying capabilities and positively impacting the climate change and social innovation agenda. Mark has published three books and over 60 articles on AI, The Future of Work, Climate Change, Industry 4.0, and IoT. Please welcome Mark Menovich. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, it's a pleasure, and delight to be here. And good day, esteemed uh, thinkers, curious minds, visionary leaders, learners, academics, researchers, students, and faculty members across United Kingdom, Pakistan, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, United States and Canada, and worldwide. Welcome to the pivotal historical moment. It's certainly an honor to be here. And I plan to share my thoughts over the next hour on transformative technology, rapidly reshaping the business landscape. As we stand at the principe of the AI revolution, let us all be the catalyst for the future where technology and humanity join forces to overcome our most significant challenges and unlock untold potential. 
Greetings to you from New York, where I'm speaking to you today. I just got in here uh, in the morning um, from California. And most recently, I spent some time in Europe, in France and Italy. But today, we're going to explore how AI is not just another tech buzzword, but a very powerful tool, revolutionizing and rehabilitating the very kind world we live in. It is a story of all of us. It's a story of humanity, and it's featured in my new book, AI, Our Planet, Transformed by AI. Let us take a journey with me into the profound realms of AI, a universe where hope meets innovation. 2023 has been a game changer, nothing short of quantum leap, fueled by a perfect storm, plummeting computer costs, massive amount of internet-based training data, and select companies investing billions into building and running colossal large language models, also known as LLMs. It's catapulting AI from the labs to the of data researchers and data scientists into the lives of millions of people across the globe. I'm sure you're experiencing it. Buzzwords like GPT, ML, deep neural networks, and NLP are everywhere. We now find ourselves at the height of the hype cycle for AI platforms, with the main street around the world, interest has peaked to the highest points. According to the reports, as you know, OpenAI's valuation at a time of investment by Microsoft was over $29 billion. It is considered to be one of the world's most valuable AI companies. Why all this excitement, you ask? Our world stands at the cusp of the paradigm shift, unlike we have ever seen before, fueled by unprecedented capabilities of AI. Together, we have the power to redefine industries, empower communities, and transform the very fabric of our society. We stand on the threshold of a new era, poised to redefine our reality forever. As leaders, all of us, Driving our economy forward, we have a unique opportunity to harness the power of this new generative AI, unlocking the full potential for our countries, our organizations, workforce, and leading the charge of this technological revolution. Yes, generative AI presents an unprecedented opportunity for business to innovate, create, compete in today's fast-paced global market. Leveraging the power of generative AI, you can streamline operations, you could optimize resources, and stay ahead of the competition. However, we must always remember, and that's the point of my book, AI is not only about efficiency, it's about inclusiveness. It's about our humanity, it's about our society, it's about our lives and our work. AI transformative potential for our society and humanity cannot be overstated. And this is why we created AI for Planet Initiative together with the United Nations to leverage AI's fight for climate change and AI Good Foundation chairmanship, which I'm involved, is involved in use cases and standards and methodologies to start building a new ethical societies, intelligent societies to redefine humanitarian platforms as we have done with a humanitarian platform 2.0 for Ukraine. Successful organizations will establish competitive advantages in this rapidly evolving landscape by acting decisively now, ensuring the proper steps to mitigate risk and implement responsible AI. So what do I think about AI? AI does represent progress. It is inescapable. It drives efficiency and sustainability at the same time, helping to solve more significant challenges worldwide. AI cannot be stopped. It cannot be paused. It cannot be controlled by any uh, community, movement, or government. AI will essentially partner with humans for the foreseeable future. Applied AI 
offers immense opportunities for organizations and governments and communities. But AI also casts dark shadows and raises existential uh, concerns and threats that the world must grapple. AI is experiential. To fully understand it, it's not enough to listen. It's not enough to read. You must use and immerse in it today, not tomorrow. Now it's time to act. Embrace AI, empower the workforce, and lead the organizations into the future of unparalleled innovation and success. Together, we, you and I, can and we will transform the way we do the standard business and make a lasting impact in the world. The reason I'm saying all of this is investment in digital transformation is expected to reach $3.4 trillion worldwide. That's not a market reach. That's investments in digital transformation. $3.4 trillion worldwide by 2026. Regarding generative AI, the most recent KPMG report survey reveals that 65% of the U.S. executives believe that generative AI will have high or extremely high impact on their organizations in the next three to five years. 60% are still a year or two away from implementing the first generative AI solution. 77% of executives believe generative AI will have a more significant impact on society than any other emerging technology at the same time. Even more critical to remember from today's lecture, it's a $3 trillion market that is being created for digital workers. According to McKinsey and World Economic Forum and others, with completely innovative and new end-to-end -end distribution models. So let's set aside science fiction today and focus on tangible impacts of AI on society. That's what we care. That's what I care. First, societal digital renaissance. Imagine a world where diseases are predicted before they manifest. In healthcare, AI is already a master artist stretching this reality. Healthcare. Through the analysis of the best medical data sets, AI can recognize patterns leading to predictive outcomes. Remote patient monitoring via AI-powered variable continuously collect data, allowing healthcare providers to intervene promptly and continuously. AI algorithms now play a significant role in assisting radiology, interpreting x-rays, see scans and MRIs with astonishing precisions. Some of this could be done by AI immediately at the facility. They don't have to be outsourced. Predictive healthcare. Have you ever pondered about the disease prevention instead of cure? We should. AI models sift through terabytes, terabytes of data, of patient data offering insights unimaginable to the human eye. With all of our 90 billion neurons that we have in our brain, AI could do it faster, quicker, and it's opening doors to preemptive care. In the public safety zone, still sticking to society's digital renaissance, law enforcement agencies now leverage AI to analyze criminal data. Predicting patterns and potential hotspots and allowing for preventative measures. My friend, executive director of Unicre, of, uh, based in Netherlands, Iraqli, is doing exactly that. Public sector in the United States, our agency, IRS, is using AI algorithms to identify tax fraud, saving millions of dollars. City of Barcelona in Spain has implemented AI-driven traffic management to reduce congestion and pollution, resulting in estimated savings of $58 million. I see AI as a public safety new guardian. What if we could forecast crime? We can through neural networks. 
AI can spot patterns in crime data, prompting proactive measures. So students and researchers on this call, the question stands before you, can we ensure ethical considerations in such, in such systems? And we have to focus and work on this. In a space, space frontiers, we see space frontiers like Elon Musk and others for accelerating this drive. But our agency in the United States, NASA, is leveraging AI to design aerospace technologies that are 30 to 40% lighter and produced in mere days than months or years. This development has potential to revolutionize space exploration, reduce cost, accelerate our quest for knowledge beyond our unbelievable planet Earth. Astronauts' assistance and monitoring is one of those systems. AI-based systems can assist astronauts in offering guidance and monitoring their health and well-being. For example, Simone, a crew interactive mobile companion, an AI-powered robot assistant, has been used on International Space Station IAS to support astronauts in daily tasks. Satellite imagery analysis, AI algorithms, are used to analyze satellite imagery and extract valuable insights such as geological features of other planets, natural disasters, and tracking climate change. For example, NASA's Mars rover, many of you don't know, but it uses AI to analyze images of Martian surface and identify potential interest for further exploration. Today, we're all gathered at a university campus setting. Some are virtual. This is a topic I deeply care. AI is making a significant impact on education, particularly in the remote and resource-limited areas like Uganda. By creating high school curriculum and bridging the educational gap, future generations can be empowered to drive innovation and development in communities. Carnegie's leading Mafia platform, MAF AI platform, has shown the average increase of 50% in students' performance compared to the traditional classroom instructions. Georgia State University in the state of Georgia in the United States successfully implemented a predictive early warning system that reduced students' dropout by 32% and increased their six-year graduation by six percentage points. That's a big deal. We're all learning about African Learning Barometer, an AI providing personalized learning experience tailored to each student's unique needs and democratizing education. So what will the classroom of tomorrow look like? Think of academic setting where learning is hyper-personalized. It's not generalized. It's not one lecture for all. AI, with the help of the faculty, which will not go away, but it actually will be enhanced by AI, can adapt to the students, the learners, pace, reimagining education as we know it. Let's look at transportation, finally. Autonomous vehicles are starting to make impact. Companies like Tesla, Waymo, which is a subsidiary of Alphabet, Cruise, acquired by General Motors, have all made significant progress in developing self-driving technologies, leading to safer and more efficient transportation. We're not at level five yet, but we're making a lot of progress. Let's jump to a topic which is very important to my heart. Climate, future, and climate and health. What does it mean for all of us, population across the world, in Africa, in Asia, South America? What does it mean for the global South? Greenhouse gas emissions is a huge area, and AI plays a role in optimizing energy usage in transportation and in buildings, resulting in significant dip in emissions. Predictive AI forecasts carbon footprints based on real-time data, providing in-depth analysis in every carbon emission trait. As I mentioned, climate is interlined with health. Disease spread and pollution monitoring is something that we need to focus on. AI systems monitor pollution levels. I was just meeting with a, a colleague on the West Coast in Palo Alto who was talking about monitoring methane methane gases using 
similar type of system using satellites, uh, constellations. But we could do, we could monitor pollution and we could predict disease spread patterns using those systems. So ch such initiatives are crucial in densely populated areas in regions such as Africa, especially during instances when COVID-19 pandemic was active and still active. Food security, AI aids and enhances optimizing crop yields, ensuring the wastage is minimized, crucial for the regions in Africa grappling with food security issues, high on the concern of the United Nations SDG goals. In the area of agriculture, AI-powered solutions for yield predictions and pest control have been developed and already adopted by companies like John Deere, Blue River Technology, and Gamaya. Climate change threatens our home. It threatens our home where I am, in Florida and, and New York, in California, and it threatens your home. AI emerges as a watchful sentinel. Symphony of energy optimization. Building a sustainable world demands energy efficiency, doesn't it? How, but how efficient can we get? With AI-driven optimizations, we are inching closer to the zenith of energy conservation, I believe. Health meets the environment. Regions like yours and ours, especially in Africa, dense and bustling with excitement, can benefit immensely from AI-driven pollution and disease spread tracking. But how could we further localize such models that are specific to the challenges that are faced in regions like Pakistan and Africa and the Middle East? Those are the questions. The planet's nurturer, another big topic, nature and nurture. Conservation and biodiversity. Beyond the wild book, Microsoft's AI for the Earth program uses AI to monitor and count endangered species, such as snow leopards in the wild. Natural disease, disease prediction. AI now monitors seismic activity to predict tsunamis and earthquakes and potentially saving thousands of lives in seismically active regions. <laughs> Sustainable agriculture. By analyzing soil health and predicting crop yields, AI is fostering a transformation and revolution in farming, ensuring it's sustainable and it's efficient. Mother Earth is calling and AI is responding in a big way as a guardian of biodiversity amid the dense forest where snow leopards treat stealthily AI-powered cameras, AI's vision technology, capture their moments, ensuring their safety. But can AI help us protect myriad of less known species waiting to be discovered? Some of them may not be officially on an endangered list. How could AI do this? AI is helping us to predict the nature's furry, earthquakes, tsunamis. They're happening more and more. I just recently seen reports in the country that I visited, Slovenia was over flooded across many towns, small villages. That's the rough of nature. And that's the issue of climate change as the civilization progresses. But what if we had a head start? The next research frontier is improving AI's predictive capabilities for such cataclysmic effects. Can't allow it to happen. The area, another area of climate is climate crusade. How do we tackle climate change issues heads on? And here, AI again is at a frontier. I'm specifically talking about carbon capture and energy efficiency. AI is facilitating the discovery of the new materials to efficient carbon capture. AI is driving systems to further enable better integration of renewable energy into grids, smart grids, intelligent grids, cutting down the reliance on fossil fuels. Energy management is a big topic, which I'm heavily involved. 
AI optimizes energy consumption and production and reduces costs and benefits the environment. For example, Google uses DeepMind, many of you know, the company they acquired for their leading knowledge on uh, AGI and some other things that they're doing in AI to optimize its data center cooling centers, resulting already in 40% reduction in energy. Weather forecasting, AI with its ability to process vast amount of data is redefining weather forecasts, ensuring timely warnings to extreme events, which is invaluable for disaster, disaster prone regions that we're seeing across the world. In the war against climate change, AI is our knight in shining armor. It's harnessing the elements such as the sun the blazing and the wind hollowing. AI is syst uh, systemically drawing energy. It's optimizing grids. It's reducing the old age reliance on fossils. But researchers and faculty and students, this is your moment now. How can we further harness AI to pioneer green energy solutions? We're doing something about this in AI for the Planet initiative. We have convened a meeting at the United Nations last few months in May. And we looked deeply with multi-platform approach and distinguished uh, leaders across the world, together with UN agencies. We've looked at this and we have identified from hundreds uh, dozens of green energy solutions. Take a look and apply and be part of that story. Uh, we're trying to elevate them and trying to focus on areas of the world that are really doing significant amount of work and um, support them in any way that we can. In the war against climate change, the oracle of weather, accurate forecasting is important. It's more than just predicting, okay, when you open your iPhone, as I often do, that it's rain or it's snow. It's about saving lives. It's AI capability here is still in the infancy. So the challenge for the academic and researchers community is to refine research and revolutionize this. So when you open your phone, you have a lot more information than just predicting rain or snow. Healthcare is making a quantum leap as I mentioned, in the AI. Let's do a deeper dive in healthcare a little bit and then put some questions for ponder. Healthcare research is experiencing a transformation thanks to AI. Moderna, everybody knows Moderna, helped save thousands and millions of lives during the COVID crisis. But their announcement of heart and disease vaccines that would be available at the end of the decade is a prime example of what AI could do. With AI's help, we could imagine a world where pandemics are quickly contained and chronic diseases are eradicated. Clinical disease support, decision support. Algorithms process vast amount of patient data, providing evidence-based recommendations. Evidence-based, data-based, not feelings, evidence. Recommendations at a point of care. My friend runs technology at Sloan Kettering Center. And that's what it's all about for them. Point of care, getting enough data to make recommendations and optimize their solutions. Ensuring that patients get the best possible advice and treatment. Personalized medicine. Tailoring treatment based on genetic and lifestyle data ensures that patients receive care urgently, and it's personalized that is suited for them, that would reduce side effects and produce better outcomes. Healthcare administration, from appointing scheduling to medical records, AI is streamlining administrative tasks. It's allowing healthcare professionals to dedicate more time to patient care, as I mentioned in Sloan Kettering Center. You have even have smart beds with sensors that provide a lot of significant data points for physicians. So we're seeing this merger of AI and biology, and it's nothing short of symphony. From data to decisions, how do we transform raw data 
into life-saving life -saving decisions. AI stands at this crossroads, directing clinical paths with unprecedented precision. It is the magic of personalized medicine. It's the era of genetic treatments, that is generic treatments, which is fading very quickly. Tomorrow's medicine will be tailored for you and I, for our own problems, personalized medicine. How could we ensure equitable access across cities, urban cities in America and across the world when we embrace this future? I want to take the next part of the discussion on generative AI. It caught a lot of attention, rightfully so. The bad, the good, and the ugly. The emergence of generative AI marks the second wave of transformational AI, in my opinion, which has potential to revolutionize as we communicate and create information across various sectors. Generative AI is a game-changing technology. It transforms the business, how it innovates, how it creates, how it competes. It unlocks new opportunities, it streamlines operations, it empowers your workforce. Let's define what it is before we deep dive. Generative AI refers to a category of AI models that can generate, not think, not logic, generate new data, new designs, and ideas based on information that it has trained on, based on hypothesis, and challenge those hypotheses more accurately each time. Those models have the remarkable ability to learn patterns, to understand context and produce intelligent outputs. However, they are not AGI and it's not human-like intelligence, at least not yet, not in the world of GPT-4 and probably not in the world of GPT-5. That requires something we call cognitive reasoning and in some instances consciousness, although we could debate this for hours. The future will be based, in my opinion, on humans and machines collaborating to solve complex problems that we address today. As we know, common sense is coming and will be part of the early release of GPT 5.0. It may even approach close to 100% the information that we're getting. LLMs are expected to work as indispensable assistants in research groups and organizations, helping us that aren't people that don't have access to thousands and thousands of people in labor or of assistance, but it will help us to sift through literature, link data sets, suggest hypothesis, and design experiments. Nonetheless, I do believe still, even with the emergence of GPT 5.0, that humans will remain in charge of the most significant research projects for the long time. And their level of insight and imagination is yet to be replicated. But some people argue and they say, no one really knows. That's true, no one really knows. As leaders in business and academia and technology, we must act responsibly and guide our organizations and governments through this unique period of immense change. We must ensure that we're navigating the ethical landscape of AI, addressing potential risks and ensuring the technology is developed and deployed for the betterment of society. And that's the premise of my book. We must remember that we are stewards of this technology and our actions will shape the world our children will inherit. We have a unique opportunity here to shape the narrative and ensure that generative AI is employed ethically and responsibly. The next decade is crucial. It will be time of unprecedented growth and together we can drive the responsible adoption of AI. It's only a matter of time before AI catches up to us. There are concerns about ethical implications of technology. You've seen it at the G20 meetings that is being covered in India. And it was covered in Indonesia last year, which I attended. It's co was covered at the G7 summit. It's covered by uh, United Nations and other agencies. Everybody's talking about data leaks, fake news, incorrect facts, not deterministic enough, right? Copyright information, copyright infringements. IP issues, potential for misuse, all of that is high. And there are arguments about generative AI, but the leading gurus, the leaders, people have been putting their life into AI. And let me mention some of them. Professor Jan LeCun, the chief AI scientist at Meta, 
believes that there are currently severe limitations of AI systems, like ChatGPT producing so-called hallucinations. While ChatGPT can understand language, it falls short in comprehending non-linguistic knowledge, such as vision. That is changing, by the way, GPT-5 multimodal. But his comments are, it is needed for human-level intelligence. Professor LeCun cites and, and does not consider chat GPT and generative AI as a significant leap in achieving AGI, a human-level intelligence. One of the creators and a father of the neural networks used to be with Google, but he recently resigned. Professor Jeffrey Hinton out of Canada spoke out. Here's what he said, quote unquote. Over the last two months, he said, my perspective on AI has shifted. It seems that AI is using a technique called backpropagation and GPT has trillions of connections, no significantly more than humans across many domains. This is concerning, he said, because machines can learn at incredibly fast rate and GPT is already capable of performing a basic common sense reasoning of IQ 89 to 90. What will happen next? What will happen next? One of the benefits of AI, he said, is that it can communicate what it learns to thousands of other instances, something that humans are unable to do. However, this also means that AI has the potential to manipulate humans easily. I'm alarmed by this, he says. I wish there was a solution, but it's unclear to me there is one or there will be one. Unlike evolution, AI doesn't have the built-in goals and this could lead to the development of cult environment. It is conceivable that human intelligence, he says, is just a temporary phase. Digital intelligence can absorb everything that humans know. If the weight of the AI models are stored, it's possible to bring back life, making AI immortal uh, immortality a reality. Now that I scared the living light li uh, out of you, each of you, let's take a closer look at what generative AI and how it benefits the business and society. It drives innovation. As I mentioned, it creates growth across different sites of the organization. It really does a lot in product development, market personalization, supply chain optimization, content creation, user experience. By adopting general, generative AI solutions, your business, your enterprise can achieve accelerate product development, encourage creativity, improve customer engagement, optimize operations, and stay ahead of the competition. Those are the positive things that generative AI is doing today. Let's talk specifically about them. Accelerating product development. Generative AI can speed up product development by producing design options within predefined limits. This method simplifies the process, shortens the time to market, and allows you the company to create innovative products more efficiently. For example, Autodesk Dreamcatcher is a generative design tool that helps develop drone chassis prototypes using 50% less material and achieve 20% better performance compared to traditional designs. Aha, uh -huh. enhance creativity. Another benefit of using generative AI in your organization, it boosts creativity. By acting as a creative partner, it can generate new ideas and design that inspires your employees and encourages innovation. OpenAI DALI and many others vision, um, OpenAI uh, generative AI vision technologies, they can produce unique and imaginative images based on textual descriptions. You already seen that, Midjourney, many others. This technology has potential to automate the creative process in companies and save companies 40% in design costs. Personalized marketing, why are marketeers are so concerned? There is a reason to be concerned, but there's a reason for the promising future. Generative AI is personalizing marketing to nth degree. It's creating tailored marketing material for individual consumers. This approach can strengthen customer relationships and increases engagement, loyalty, and revenue. For example, Frazzy's AI-powered uh, tool, copywriting, has been shown to improve open email rates by 26% compared to subject lines written by humans, resulting in higher customer engagements and revenue. AI is also streamlining content creation. 
One of the ways the companies save money is and time is on content creation. But the AI models like GPT are automating this process. By doing so, they reduce content production cost by 60% and cut the time spent on content in half. Netflix, many of you, many of us are using Netflix to watch videos. Netflix is AI-driven recommendation, okay? It was initially uh, done by reinforcement learning, and now it's taking advantage of generative AI and is responsible for more than 80% of the content watched on their platform, AI is. High-level personalization has enabled that company to keep its customers engaged, including the uh, resulted in annual value of over a billion dollars. As we deep dive into AI potentialism, I'm going to be closing this part of the presentation soon. Let's consider the broader implications. Yes, AI is a significant advancement of how we approach the world and will have profound impact on our history. It's a tool for creating a more efficient world, but a more humane world is needed. It's a world where we're optimizing processes and increasing productivity, but we've got to focus on society and I really love the model that Japan came out in uh, G20 back in 2019 called Society 5.0, where humans, human-centric model leads and AI is enabling us our future. AI has potential to provide solutions for the most, hu for the most humanity's most pressing issues. It has to make the world more sustainable. What's the point of making it efficient if we cannot make it sustainable? With the help of generative AI, we can achieve those breakthroughs in research and design in complex environments. Countries and governments and organizations must keep up the pace with rapid AI advancements requiring investments uh, in understanding generative AI, evaluating internal capabilities and acquiring the right tools ethical considerations and ex existential threats must be addressed and must ensure that AI is developed and deployed responsibly. We must strike a balance between leveraging AI potential and safeguarding our values in society. But before we part ways today, it's certainly been an honor and pleasure to be in front of you in the areas of the world that need AI the most. I'd like to offer some suggestions. In today's rapidly changing landscapes, the world must take decisive action, implementing responsible AI measures to minimize risk while gaining competitive advantage. To ensure that ensure responsible and aligned use of AI technologies within your organizations and your countries and your communities, it's important that we establish clear AI governance framework in outlining ethical guidelines and policies for development and deployment. That includes active engagement in global AI policy discussions, that I mentioned that happened already through many of the UN agencies, the World Bank, and others, but continue on the local stand at the local level. It must establish government standards. Additionally, ethical AI guidelines should be developed addressing data privacy, transparency, bias, fairness is one of those big issues. Collaboration and open dialogue between technology, business, and societal stakeholders should be encouraged and ensure balanced perspective on AI and its implication. Learning from other industries and communities and companies, forging partnerships, ecosystems, must be done to drive innovations and share best practices. We must, we must overcome AI um, challenges in adoption, prioritizing transparency, as I mentioned, fairness and accountability in decision-making. Clear communication of this rationale behind AI-driven decisions must be clear to all stakeholders, internal and external. To conclude, AI isn't just a technological advancement. It is a catalyst for global change. While its potential is immense, it is imperative we use AI responsibly. We, as a stakeholders in academia and research and global communities, we hold the torch. Let's illuminate the future where AI serves the humanity, the environment, the planet, harmoniously. Picture a world orchestrated by AI intelligence, harmoniously interwinding with human endeavors. Our mission as the vanguards of the academia and research and business is to sculpt and create this world. While the symphony of AI, as I mentioned, is enhancing, 
we must be the composers of these ethical boundaries. So dear esteemed colleagues, we're standing in the dawn of the new era where AI will redefine our lives, how we work, how we live, how we create. As leaders, we have tremendous responsibility to harness the power of this technology to drive our organizations forward and shape the future of humanity. The future is now, not tomorrow. We stand on the precipice of extraordinary transformation. As we conclude, I urge you to re recognize your exceptional opportunities before us. We are the architects of the AI transformation. We are the trailblazers of this new era. Let us embrace this responsibly with courage, with wisdom, with commitment to ethical, responsible AI. In doing so, we will reshape the world. We will leave an indelible legacy for generations to come. We're going to embark on this inspiring journey together. We'll shape the future and leave our legacy for generations to come, knowing that we are building a better world for ourselves, our businesses, and our future generations. Together, we could lead the charge, and we will have a lasting impact. I thank you for your attention, your passion, your unwavering dedication to progress. The time to, is ripe to seize the moment. Seize the moments and make history. Be proud of your country and your nation and your cities. Let's not be passive spectators here. Let's not say what happened. Let's be script writers of this AI-driven saga. Let's challenge, let's ponder, let's innovate. Your future, our future, our collective destiny awaits. Thank you for your time. And I look forward, look forward to the world where we harmoniously coexist and evolve with AI. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Mark Minovich, let's give him a round of applause for that. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Minovich, thank you so very much for that inspiring message. You started with a clarion call, a call for action, and you ended likewise challenging us and asking us to be a part of a larger mission. It is one we know that you have shared even in your talk uh, not so long ago when you asked us to work together to solve the world's challenges together. And this was at the Global AI Summit in Radia not too long ago. So we know that is a part of who you are and what you believe in. A quick question as we have a round of questions and they're coming in from online and in the audience. We have about 15 minutes for this. You wrote a book, Six Billion Minds, several years ago, and now you have written another new book. In the book, six years ago, you were talking about managing, outsourcing, and how interesting that changes now in this time and age. What would you say is the biggest shift you've seen? And is this model still possible? Is the outsourcing to humans or to machine? Or is it, as you've said, human-powered AI? Well, thank you very much for this question. First of all, let's uh, discuss and uh, think through uh, what happened uh, over those years. You know, AI was not discovered yesterday. As you know, uh, research has been going on since late 1950s and 1960s. And the original question was, can uh, AI think? Uh, so the many, many years, the research community uh, that has worked on um, those AI problems uh, and uh, delivering the AI that we have today uh, worked uh, diligently in uh, research and academia worldwide in trying to come out with you know, solutions and still ponder with these questions, can AI really think like humans? And hopefully we'll get an answer very soon as I think the world of generative AI and deep neural networks will converge. Um, but with the book uh, that um, I have written with my uh, co-author at that time, who used to be uh, the head of World Economic Forum um, uh, for Asia, and uh, then founded uh, his multidisciplinary organization called Harasis. Uh, we've written this book, Six Billion Minds. But when we looked at that issue at that time, we looked at the world interconnected, global, uh, seamlessly dependent on each other um, in a big way, and uh, with tremendous amount of opportunity for developed nations uh, with this clear outsourcing model where the knowledge could be anywhere in hotspots across the world. It doesn't have to be sitting in one location. It doesn't have to be in Silicon Valley. It doesn't have to be in Berlin, but it could be anywhere. Uh, things have shifted uh, drastically since the book 
uh, again, was the massive rise of uh, what we call applied AI. You know, academic AI, and uh, as I mentioned to you, has been around for some time. Uh, even some of the models that we have discussed, and I convened one of the early meetings of uh, UN at UN of AI leaders back in uh, 2015, 2016. But the, the AI wasn't as uh, you know as prevalent in solutions, and uh, it's not getting it wasn't getting mainstream attention as it is today. So what has transpired is number one politically, we're in a much more I think parochial world, very regionalized. Uh, people, nations are figuring out how to preserve their precious resources, become more efficient, become more optimized than before. The supply chains, you know, even still, still there, uh, you know, are were are not something that we discussed at Six Billion Minds. We were talking about pervasive, transparent world, communicating at all parts. Now you have you have a lot of nationalism on the government level. But we now have AI, which is stronger than ever to solve some of those problems. Those are the shifts that I'm seeing since we have wrote that original book, Six Billion Lights. Fantastic. Thank you for that overview. You've presented to us here at the Aga Khan University and with our partners and friends in academia and research. And the following question is from one of our online audiences. What is the starting point for students, researchers, professionals, to harness this? And are there specific tools we can look at to be able to do so? So uh, your journey, first of all, is to, um, you have uh, ever pre uh, pervasive and pervasive uh, capabilities now with YouTube and other sources. Find courses that are available. Google is providing, Alphabet is providing courses on introduction to AI. Uh, I believe um, uh, the chief decision officer, uh, chief decision science officer of, of Google, Casey Kazarkov, has provided immense uh, lectures on AI that would be very, very useful uh, for everybody to undertake. And they're all free, uh, all available on YouTube. But more importantly, is start uh, getting involved, especially, you know, you see societies like Estonia, Slovenia, US, Canada, France, uh, deeply educating uh, population with uh, data science, mathematics, statistics. Uh, it's very, uh, very, very important to get involved early on and start doing basic uh, AI, uh, basic AI um, uh, working with toolkits that are available and uh, immersing yourself properly. So I would say uh, start uh, opening, going to uh, Microsoft and uh, and Google and looking at those toolkits and, uh, and, and, and and capabilities and studying early on. And schools and communities should be implementing a lot more uh, expertise around data science and knowledge and, uh, and statistics. Thank you very much for that one. Let's expand it a bit more. We've talked about how it offers us wonderful opportunities globally and how we can reinvent ourselves and find new ways to find new solutions. Based on that, and I'm going to segue into a question asked by one of our online attendees as well. For instance, we know that AI and the onset of that technology is based in developed countries. We know that that's where the greatest technological bases and mindsets are at the moment. When we look at the global South, what opportunity does it give the global South to participate in that kind of environment? Does this technology actually create more or a, of a digital divide or not? So very good question. This question is posed by many of the UN agencies and others. And uh, today, uh, the talent of AI, because it requires this level of uh, education uh, in math and science, but also deep dives in many of the toolkits and platforms um, you know, it's uh, requiring a lot of the work in feature engineering and uh, uh, really uncovering the insights of data with statistical tools lies in certain markets. What we have to do a lot, uh, especially in the West, is we have to democratize a AI. It has to be democratized. Now you see new LLMs, not only uh, OpenAI, uh, ChatGPT, but you have many other uh, uh, LLM models 
uh, on the market. And I think it's important for Global South Africa, Southeast Asia, to start really working on your own LLM, your own model, number one. Number two is start opening centers of excellence and and, uh, make sure that they have some innovative projects to work on, uh, include sandboxing and other things uh, that you could do to start innovative experiments. So I believe it is very crucial to, yes, work hand in hand with Western universities and, and for us in the West to democratize AI to the nth degree. But at the same time, don't wait. Start uh, in your own countries, in your own communities, define a project and figure out how AI could remarkably solve or at least attempt to give you some answers with that. And and more importantly, you know, and educate yourself online um, and, and be part of that community. And uh, make sure that each government, your governments, uh, are investing heavily. We need, uh, right now, it's heavily um, focused on the United States and China and, and other countries, G7 countries that are investing heavily in AI. But it's important to invest in the national AI strategy and the regional AI. So it drives demand for new type of jobs that we discussed during this presentation. As the jobs are going to transform and change, we need those opportunities more and more. So encourage your communities and your governments to do more, to put emphasis and make sure that universities and colleges and early education, AI takes and data science specifically is a priority. Excellent. Do we have any questions burning in the audience as I prepare for the next question? Start preparing. I'll need a question from the house audience. The next question, we have a saying, well, we've made it a, a Kenyan saying, the goat has run away from its rope. In the West, you'd say the cat is outside the bag, as, as, as we got away from the bag. Jeff Hinton, the father of AI, has expressed his concerns. So AI is really growing in rapid ways. The question is, will humans remain relevant? As you said, it comes closer with AI and generative and the neural networks. As these begin to merge and blend, will humans still remain relevant? Well, this is a deep question, and, and thank you for asking. There are a lot of schools of thought here. Um, so uh, this question is breaking down and producing red lines now within the AI and research community uh, across the board, across many countries. Uh, I happen to believe that humans will remain. Uh, maybe it's just my uh, good spirits and and the way I see humanity, I see humanity that is always resilient. Uh, but there are others, including uh, many of the, the leaders in the AI, including Jeffrey Hinton uh, and others who are uh, Yosha Benji and, and uh, Professor Yosha Benji and others who are basically saying that it is going to be complicated to contain uh, with the new releases of generative AI, even though the previous ones are not based on human reasoning and logic, uh, but really more on pattern identification and hypothesis. Uh, the stronger you have a hypothesis and, and the more data that you have, you train the systems and it becomes more, um, much stronger to solve your problem and generate data that you need. Over time, this is gonna change. And Professor Jeffrey Hinton believes that uh, eventually uh, they will become you're smarter uh, by IQ uh, than human beings and be able to solve complex problems and understand uh, understand where they are in terms of um, contextual understanding, uh, in terms of their reasoning and logic. Uh, so it's it's um, uh, the community is struggling, and there are enough um, data to suggest that before we were saying, "Oh, is uh, ge general." general AI, AGI, human-like AI, it may take only, it may will take 50 years, 100 years. That was the response maybe three years ago. But now the response is maybe it will be five to 10 years until those systems really are take over and do a lot of the human logic and capabilities. So what do we need to do? 
We need to make sure that we, as I mentioned in the presentation, become composers. We focus on guardrails like ever before, that we try to protect the future. You know, one very famous uh, scientist, uh, researcher, uh, Professor Roman Yampolsky, is always saying, caution, caution, caution. We don't want machines to control us, but how could we prevent this? There's not enough in the current systems and designs to prevent machines taking over. Uh, and we have to do a lot more in guardrails. It's not enough just to have regulations. What Europe is doing, and soon there's a whole discussion in the United States and other countries are embarking. You can't stop the progress of AI. So we, all the citizens and countries and companies, have to get involved in putting as many guardrails on AI, having a way to control AI before AI controls us. And I believe this whole new initiative of Society 5.0 is really, really important because it really drives human centricity on the first level. So it is a little bit of scary future, but it's a future that it's a future that hopefully we as humans could co-create properly. But we have to know in advance AI is growing more more powerful, compute is getting more powerful, and it's learning its its ability to learn and um and create an impact is even more uh, uh, more amazing. Thank you. We have just come to the conclusion of today's presentation, but there's one question which we are not allowed to escape. And it is one, it's a green question, because you did mention the advantages of AI in environmental management. What are some of the blind spots of AI in environmental protection or conservation, if any? So AI is a remarkable tool, as I mentioned in the presentation, and I uh, deep dive in energy management and weather forecasting. Um, a lot of it also, in my opinion, depends on models and depends how you uh, commercialize those models and put them to use. So in my opinion, my humble opinion, AI it becomes a major enablement, but it requires huge adoption of AI within those systems. So you have more accurate farming, you have better prediction of earthquakes. Uh, you need those models and you need better uh, funding, in my opinion, uh, for those capabilities to be adopted uh, across the world where it needed the most. So I think AI is remarkable tools. Uh, it, it could provide a lot more uh, capability in terms of patterns and, and, and predictions and forecasting. Uh, for for humanity, but it's lacking. You know, there's a lot of discussion. Let me step back again. There's a lot of discussions by large companies of massive investments uh, and climate change, but but the large companies, including the big technology and financial institutions, cannot do it alone. We have to make sure that we provide level of funding and we give uh, um, mentorship and experience to startups across the world exactly what we have done for the AI for planet. We got to bring them into the forefront so they could continue to grow and provide their data sets, their insights, their technology, their platforms, their models to solve those problems. And if we do more and more in this particular case, it is because the earth is burning right now and, and being overheated and causing all of those uh, unprovoked disasters, we need more funding you know, not only in general uh, science across the countries and, and satellites and tracking systems and constellations, uh, but we need funding in entrepreneurship and, 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 and early startups and make sure that they could reignite the work that they're doing in uh, pattern predictions, in um, uh, energy management, in grid, com in grid computing. And we also have to do a lot more, to be honest, in investing in smart cities. We're not doing enough here in United States. Our cities are faltering, are falling apart. We need new ability, new nerve centers. I call autonomous nerve centers using AI and specifically to monitor, you know, monitor the weather, uh, monitor the temperature rise, uh, you know, and be able to be more predictive as the storms are coming. And really across the world, across African continent, everywhere, we need to be able to do this more and more. Uh, so AI has to be embedded in the smart cities. And I think this is the power of the new power of LLMs. We have to be able to do more and more of this. We have to be able to do a lot more that we're doing in energy efficiency and carbon capture. Um, uh, we are. We need to discover new materials uh, and to make carbon 
uh, to carbon capture more. And um, I think better integration is needed. We're lacking a lot of integration. We have a lot of those grids, uh, but we don't have a way to integrate them better. So those are the things that I would say that we have to do more. And uh, I think if we are, we will harness those elements and we will become our, um, we will become an oracle. Uh, we will become much smarter. Uh, but we have the capabilities. We have the tools. We have thousands and thousands of startups across the world. We just have to integrate and bring them to reality better. Thank you very much, Mark. We really appreciate what you've shared with us today, how you've inspired us, how you've highlighted some areas that we can look and explore and exploit. And as you've said, co-create with this technology. We know that AI, like time, is here to stay. We just have to figure out how to work with it. But your statement, humanity will be in charge, I believe is one that we should adopt going forward. Ladies and gentlemen. Thank, right thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir, for all those online. We thank you so very much for your patience, for your contributions, for your questions. Those of us here in the auditorium, thank you so very much for your time and for participating, for, to, for coordinating. We want to say special thanks to Mr. Shalkat, our Global Chief Information Officer, on this today's event, which was how we use artificial intelligence to create a future, a sustainable future for humanity. To all of us, have a wonderful afternoon.